I sent you a note. That very night in Exeter. It made a proposal. Acceptance I took to be a signal that you wished me to proceed with my break away from all I knew that you wished for me. I was betrayed by a faithless wretch of a servant. The letter was not delivered. And you never knew. No. And what I say means nothing to you. It means very much to me. So much, I... I beg you to continue. I do not know what to say, simply. You told me then that you loved me. You gave me the greatest proof a woman can that what possessed us was no ordinary degree of mutual sympathy and attraction. I do not deny that. But you have found newer and more pressing affections. I did not think ever to see you again. That does not answer my question. Mr Smithson, I am not his mistress. Then I do not know how to interpret your very evident embarrassment at seeing me again. Mr Smithson, there was a falsehood in what was between us. I was not to blame for that. I have since seen artists destroy work that might seem to the amateur perfectly good. I was told that if an artist is not their own sternest judge, they are not fit to be an artist. I was a thousand miles from here when the news that you had been found came to me. You, you cannot answer me with observations, however apposite, on art. They were intended to apply to life Then as what well. you are saying is that you have never loved me. I could not say that. But you must. You must say I was totally evil. I never saw in him anything other than an instrument I could use, for now I don't care that he still loves me, that in all his travels he has not seen a woman to compare to me. You must say I do not care that his crime was to have shown a few hours indecision. But I do not wish to marry. I do not want to share my life. Mr Smithson, I am happy. I too have changed. I have learned much of myself. I make no conditions. All that Miss Sarah Woodruff is, Mrs. Charles Smithson may continue to be. No. I am not to be understood. You forget that you have said that to me before. Have you thought much of me in my absence? To begin with. And six months later, when I first saw the notices you had placed. Then you did know. And which obliged me to change my lodgings and name. I knew you had not married Miss Freeman. Then you have not only ruined my life, you have taken pleasure in it. I knew nothing but unhappiness would come from such a meeting. I think you lie. I think you reveled in the thought of my misery. You misjudge me. No, it is as I say. You have not only planted the dagger in my breast, you have delighted in twisting it. A day will come when you will be called to account for what you have done to me. And if there is justice in heaven... Your punishment shall outlast eternity. I cannot let you go believing that. Please. There is a lady in this house who knows me, understands me better than anyone else in the world. She wishes to see you. I beg you to let her do so. She will explain. I am astounded that you think a stranger to me could extenuate your behaviour. She is waiting. She knows you are here. I do not care if it is the Queen herself. I will not see her. I shall not be present. Stand aside. No. Let go of my arm. What am I to understand by this? What a less honourable man might have guessed some time ago. 